we talked about on the channel, uh, Andy and myself, we were at Heroes Con a couple weeks ago in Charlotte, North Carolina, big comic convention, really focuses on independent comics. And one of the things we were trying to do um, was network. I, I went and talked to a ton of creators, publishers, um, aspiring authors, writers, and uh, pitched the channel, talked to them about, um, you know, trying to network and get, get to know some people and see who we could get on the show. Uh, see if people had seen our work. And I would love to know from you, Arun, from a publishing side, um, some tips for those of us maybe who have a YouTube channel, those of us maybe who are aspiring writers or artists. Uh, how should we go about trying to network with publishers? What are some maybe some do's and don'ts? And um, what are some maybe tips uh, and advice you have for those of us trying to get into the comics game uh, and trying to kind of approach you guys? Yeah, I mean, I, this is going to be a really general one. It's just like, just be cool and be yourself. Because honestly, like, it, it don't, don't worry about, like, turning, playing whatever character. Like, you don't need to be the rock with a catchphrase. You don't need to be, like, dressed in a suit. You don't need to be, like, just be yourself. And, like, anybody worth their self who's meeting you is not going to be, like, what a joker he was wearing a, I'm going to say Toronto Raptor shirt, but I'm the only Canadian here. Um, you know, like, if you're the convention, you're like, you run a press site, like, I mean, like, this is kind of dumb. Shower, um, groom, um, look presentable. It sounds silly. Don't have, like, if this has happened, don't have Cheetos stuck in your beard, like Cheeto dust. Like, it's not that it makes you a bad reporter, but, like, first, we can like it or not, but first impressions have a huge impact. And what I can tell you is, as someone we talked about last time, we started at CBR and it was on the outside coming in. There's a lot of us like this on this side of the business and we just want to help people who want to support comics right like running any kind of comic site i want to say thank you to anyone if you who did, does it you don't get into it for the money right just like you don't get into comics for the money you get into comics because of love and that's a commonality we all have so remember that we're all in comics whether it's marketing writing art lettering coloring reporting investments we're all in it because of love right we're all sitting here on a, a in the, a, at night doing this because we freaking love comics. And so remember that, and I want you to keep that in mind because when you go approach someone, um, and if let's say you're coming to the Boom Studios booth and you're at San Diego, and so you meet someone there, you know, um, what I would say is like, if you're, if you're looking for a press contact, they're not there, have a professional business card to give them. And for the love of all things holy, do not have a, the word aspiring anywhere on that card, please. If you write, you are a writer. If you, if you blog, you are a blogger, you are not aspiring anything like remove that from your lexicon, remove it from your brain because you've taken the first step. You're doing what 99% of other people don't do. You're doing the work. And then, yes, there is like, you know, there is that, there is the 1% of the 1%, like my dear brother, Donnie Cates, who like rockets up to the top, but you people forget when he did Buzzkill, when he was a Marvel intern and his whole journey over these years um, to get to where he got to, the seven, eight years of this dedicated journey. And so don't forget to, um, don't forget to uh, remember you're playing a long game and just be decent. So have a professional business card, give it to someone. They may pass it on. Ask for a business card, bad. Ask for a contact. But don't do the thing where like, Monday after San Diego, you email someone like, hey, I haven't heard back from you yet. What's up? You know, like, yeah, you haven't heard back because everyone's exhausted from that giant show they just put on. At the same time, like, don't wait three months to get back to them either. You, you got to feel it out. And like, if you hit up someone, you don't hear back, please don't do the thing where you email them back the next day. Like, I'm a big believer in the 24 hour or one business day turnaround on emails. But I'm, I, after we're finished this, I got to write something that I'm late on for someone. So like this stuff happens. So what I'm telling you is um, be professional. And I know in that moment, it feels like it's uh, everything has to happen now, but it, it doesn't. So just play the long game, be a regular, decent person. And, and you know, like y'all are, we all already have something in common. You and me, whoever the you is uh, listening to this, watching this, we love comics. We're good. If you don't love hockey, don't tell me you love hockey. Like, you don't need to suck up. But if you do love hockey, I'd love to talk to you about hockey. That's cool. Like, that's not going to get any more coverage, but it makes you a human being to me. 
So if you're a press outlet coming up to me, don't ask me for Grant Morrison the first time for an interview. Don't ask me for, you know, Brian Azzarello the first time. But like, remember that these people have limited bandwidth. And if what I did when I was at CBR and I started getting, uh, dealing with these outlets with, with these publishers, of course, I'm going to have to ask you for those big ones. I just didn't expect it. Look for the books that you think might be getting less press right now or creators who get less press. And on some level, you can hit them up on Twitter, sure, and do that. Or if you work through a publicist, you'll probably get an answer faster. And so, uh, you know, we can connect you with some of those folks, but don't also know what you want to cover. Don't be like, we'd love to cover any creators who are available. Like, be precise. Don't be afraid to ask and get the no's and then pivot to the other side of where you ask for something so broad, you don't get anything in return. So like, that is my, um, that's a big piece of advice for me. I don't know. Tell me before I ramble on more, like, what did you observe? And when you were networking, like what, what did you find worked for you or didn't work for you? Cause I'd love to hear what y'all found for. Well, I, for the last four years that I've been doing this at Heroes Con, this is the first year where it was like really heavy Simplements comics promotion. So we're trying to really promote the YouTube channel. Um, and it's funny, you hit on a couple of things that I did that I really found successful. One thing was, shout out to Brian, sent a bunch of business cards to me. So having that business card to be able to pass out, I noticed made a, a difference. The other thing I did was I printed off what I call a one sheet. So I printed off one page that it had a mission statement. It explains what we do on the channel. It explains what this show, the Indie Spotlight series show is. It gave a little bio on Andy, myself, Brian, our social media, um, and comicbookinvest.com. And I found that having that with the business card to pass out allowed me to not have to do so much explaining. And I think it separated me from other people who were trying to do the same thing. Um, and I also found, like Arun had just said, that, you know, Having that report, I, people were really receptive. Right? I, it didn't matter whether I was talking to Matt Kent or Cullen Bunn or um, you know some up and coming person, uh, kind of like Ben Bishop or you know more on the kind of the independent side. Uh, people were really receptive just to your passion. They could kind of feel that it was something that I was excited about. And like one thing I'm a big believer in, don't tell somebody you're a fan of theirs if you're not a fan of theirs, if you don't know their work, because you're going to get into a conversation you're not going to really be prepared to, and they're going to know. So, you know, I, I try to be genuine. If I haven't read something or I haven't checked something out, I, I don't have a problem being honest with that. And I find that rather than the creator being like, you know, turned off by it, instead they're encouraging me to check this out or check that out. Um, and then the other thing that I found that worked really well, and I've been doing this for a few years, is it kind of how you mentioned not necessarily walking up right off the bat and going for Brian Azzarello or somebody like that. I've been able to make relationships with people who I felt like were on the rise. So people mm -hmm. that, I, that weren't getting like that attention you said. So, um, you know, four or five years ago, I interviewed um, Matthew Rosenberg far before he was the Matthew Rosenberg he is today. I, my very first on video interview was Donny Cates far before he was the Donny Cates he is today. Um, and because it, so I was able to work with those people, Jason Latour is another one, um, work with those people early on, I've been able to build a rapport that now, as they are the people that they are, I can still reach out to those people. I can still get access to those people. Donny Cates is going to answer my questions. He's, he's verified some first appearances for us in the past and things like that. And you're going to be able to build that through that networking. The the thing that you said that I'm the most like, I, my ears were tuned into is the follow-up because that's the stage I'm in right now. So um, I'm trying to follow up with people. I, gave, I did what you said. I gave them kind of a week because I didn't want, I knew some people were traveling from all over the place. It's con yeah. season. They got to get back and work on their books, um, things like that. So I've given them some time and now I'm in that process of I need to follow up with the people that I spoke to to try to, get to that next step. And that's kind of that point that I'm at right now where I've got to finesse that world. Like you said, I don't want to be pushy and I don't want to be, you know, too forward, but I, I want to try to make sure people know that, Hey, I was serious and, and genuine about what I said at the convention. And I, I would like to work with you. Yeah. I think, I think that's all really good. Like, look, it's, um, some of the best relationships I made in comics were from people who were like, Hey, you treated me awesome when I was like nobody and getting my first start. Like when I would, if even working at Marvel, I'd be, you know, hanging up publicity there and they'd be like, you treated me like I, I mattered. And I'm like, of course you do. You're writing a comic. Like, you know, and I think as a 
as a press person, if, if treat everybody you meet, whether it's that person working at the booth, whether it's the publicist, whether it's a creator, treat them, treat them all the same. And I'm telling you, you're going to find like, I don't want to sound like all like LA hippie about this, but like put that good energy out there and it'll come back to you eventually. Like, we're all in this together. Like, and if you don't love a book, don't say you, you love it. Also, you don't need to tell me you don't like it either. Like you don't need to volunteer here. It's not your thing. Um, just move on. Uh, and I think that's the thing that's really important is to make sure that you're genuine. And I know authentic is such an overused buzzword, but be authentic, be your real self. And like, look, the three, the, the four of us, we never talked before our last inter the last interview. We all get along great. And we all like DM and email each other now about stuff. And like, that's cool. And it's like, it all works because we're just being human beings with each other. Right. And like, um, but again, the advantage we have right here is we all love comics. It's all why we're in it. You can, it movies and TV, you can get into for the money. You don't get into comics for the money because it's, it's not nearly as much of a sure thing. And so, uh, and if it is a sure thing, I somehow missed that boat on it. <laughs> I swear they pay me well. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's like writing comics. I'm not doing it because it's like, I'm going to make a crazy amount of money off it. Boom pays me a fair rate page rate, but like, it's just kind of love it. And so when you can give coverage to people like that, they remember it. And when you're doing it genuine and you're the other part of it is to like, act like you've been there before. Like it's one thing to get a photo and maybe you're like, Oh, I, I really love this book. Can you sign a copy? But like, then don't be hanging up be like, Hey, can I like send you 10 copies of this other book signed, like shift back to me? And like, don't like, it sounds silly, but people will take it. Sometimes when you open a door for people, they want to force their way through it all. And they're, and they're like, you only want to just, you just want to give them a little bit of sliver into your life. And like, I don't like play the long game. Just play the long game and I promise you it will pay off for you when you need something the most. And then when you ask for something, people will say, hey, Andy or Brian or Jack, they're asking for something and it must be something big because they've never asked me. Y'all don't ask me for anything. Like you're not hitting me up for like to be hooked up with things. Like I know that. Like that's like, and, I, and we, that's good because I would hate for us to like, we don't want to have that relationship. And right. it's like, but also that's how I know you're professionals. Why well, I want to do this again. Cause it wasn't like we talked and you're like, Hey, by the way, do you have the uh, Goni Montez variant to power Rangers number nine? So I can have another first appearance of Draken. You know, like you're not, you're not doing that. You're, um, you're folk. You're like, you're, you're just being professionals. And like, I think I know people will say, man, I can't afford business cards. Okay. And if you can't, I get it. Let me just tell you, like, you should try to afford them. And if they're not the most expensive things, but if you can't afford them, I respect that. Then you better have, like, you better have a process where you ask other people for their cards. And honestly, don't tell someone I can't afford business cards. Just, just say you're out. Just say you're out. It's fine. You know, I won't, I don't, no publicist cares enough to question that in their head. They're like, cool, you're out of cards. Um, what I did when I run out of cards now, I'm just like, hey, here's my phone. Just type my email address. In, uh, Type your email address into this email. I'll say hi from Boom. It's a rune. Now just email me after the show. Like do you just and like find those solutions if you can't afford to do that. Um, and you know just be a human. And understand that. Understand that people are busy. And please understand we sometimes drop the ball not because we're out to get you and don't value you, but because stuff just happened. And if you can give us that, cut us that slack, we'll cut you the same slack too. Awesome info. Uh, Vista Print's a good site for, for business cards. You can get them cheap and all the way up to, you could probably get gold plated ones if you want. But uh, Vista Print, or even those ones where Staples has the, you could print them at home and they yeah. have templates for them. Uh, or, I mean, just do what, do what you have. Or just do like he said with the one sheet and put your contact information on a one sheet yeah. and kind of just explain. Not a lot of detail, not like 10 font, make it simple and what they have. So you, you kind of get your message across and they'll thank you for that. And I want to touch on one thing you said, where you said, uh, we don't ask you for things. I also treat, I mean, you and everyone else we met from Mad Cave to David Boer, we're building that relationship. I like the relationship we have. It's almost like a friend relationship. So I think, hey, if I don't sit there and ask my friends for stuff all the time, I'm not going to turn around and do the same thing with the people that we've been talking to and meeting on here. Cause 
I just enjoy the conversation and it makes me like those books that much more. Now when I buy books from the people we've talked to on this, on any spotlight series, there's more to it. There's more of an attachment to it because there's a relationship formed with the creators or the publishers. So you're seeing it from a different level than I would coming in just saying, because before we had the interview and we talked to you last time, I could tell you without a doubt, I probably wouldn't have bought Angel or any Buffy books, but now Arun talked about it. Let me see what's in it. Glad I did, because I've been loving those storylines. Awesome. Yeah, I think like, no, look, I think you're hitting on it, which is just you gotta you gotta think outside yourself with this stuff. And look, if you're if you are a writer or artist, notice or colorist letter, notice I did not use the word aspiring. I don't want to hear that word. I love Remove it. I love it. that. Donny Cates had that tweet this week talking about that. I don't know. I, I don't know if you saw that. He said the same thing to a fan who had kind of tweeted and said, "I'm an aspiring comic book writer." He said, "Don't say that. If you write, you're a writer." Yeah, and and you know what? It's funny. Uh, I hosted his spotlight panel at WonderCon, and we had the same conversation with the audience there, which is like, take that aspiring stuff out of your mouth. Like that is not a word you need to use. If you are aspiring, you don't show off about it, right? You're 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 a player. You know, you're in here, like you know it's uh i'm thinking like hockey for some reason but like but let's say baseball if you're a triple a player you're not an aspiring mlb player you're a triple a player you own that stuff you got further than most people will ever get okay i don't think i can even throw a fastball to the home plate if i, I i'm probably hit the dirt and like turf it so like be like own everyone i'm telling you like i did this presentation recently um i'm not sure are, are you all fast and furious fans Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like diehard. I took two days off work this year for Hobbs and Shaw. I'm not kidding. Just two days to go watch it. Um, and I already booked off my vacation days next year for Furious Nine. I got two more days off for that too. And I booked off two days in 2021 for John Wick Four. So like I I'm I'm a, I like this is, I am straight up prioritizing. But I gave this um, presentation with Asana, who's this um, task management software company that we work with. I was there at an, an event and I gave it about the business lessons you can learn from Dominic Toretto, right? Because he's run a very successful business um, with uh, in Fast and Furious. Um, he's, run a, he's run a really strong business. And one of the things I said is that you have to realize and what, what you realize in the Furious 5 uh, team scene, right? When they're telling you what everybody's going to do. Every single person, even if it's Tyrese, who's the his, Roman's the butt of jokes there, right? Every person in that movie is good at something someone else isn't good at. So Dom may be the best driver, but he can't infiltrate places the way Han can. He can't smooth talk the way Roman can. He's not a hacker, um, or he's not as good with computers as uh, as Tej somehow is, because Ludacris can do everything, right? Like, everyone is the best at something, and remember that you are really great at something. So... As a writer, maybe you don't write like Donny Cates and you don't like write like Jason Aaron or John Hickman. That's okay. Figure out what you do really well. You know, like don't worry about being the next someone, worry about being the first you. And I know how cheesy that is, but it's true. Cause like I look using the Jinder Mahal story as an example, uh, that is a different version of the story than Donny Cates would have written or Jonathan Hickman or Jason Aaron would have written. We can debate the merits. I'm pretty sure the Jason Aaron version of that story would be Awesome, and I now want to read it. Um, so, Jason, if you're listening, I want your Jinder Mahal story. But, like, you know, I just leaned into the stuff that meant something to me, and that's like that's all I can do, right? And I can't worry about how to compare. So, am I an inspiring writer? No, no, I'm a writer. And like, everyone's got to start somewhere and do their thing. And so, like, own own it. Walk in with that confidence. And if you're these, if you are in a creator like this, and you want to get hired somewhere. Um, approach people the same way like if you're fresh be respectful if you see them at a bar or some drink up say hey exchange contact information don't like overwhelm them and just like you know have a conversation and then if you're going to have those conversations don't be the artist who doesn't have samples ready online don't be you know as a and look as a writer it's the hardest thing you can't submit scripts to be reviewed right no one can take unsolicited pitches please don't do it what you can do and what you should do is you should, um, uh, you know, keep writing, self-publish online, have something you can show someone. If you want to write comics, but you write a novel, hey, that novel is great. If you want to write comics, but you write a TV, that's awesome. You're probably getting paid well. 
And like, then you can like, that can show how you write. But like, if you write, you need to write. You need to like, you need to start somewhere. Like, look, I have been, I've, uh, there is in this process of working with Boom on the creative side of things, which is separate from my day job. And um, there's things I've pitched they said no to. And I just keep pitching because uh, for everything they say no to, there's a gender mahal or an IRS story they say yes to. And so you've got to keep doing, you got to keep, you got to keep, keep creating. No one's stopping you from going to Kickstarter. No one's stopping you from just buying, you know, um, not that Brian Wood.com and like running your web comic there every day, right? Or every week or whatever schedule you can do. No one's stopping you from going back in the day with digital webbing, deviant art. I don't know what it is now. No one's stopping you from networking on Twitter or Instagram, finding the, the, the artistic talent you want, or conversely, finding the writer you want to work with. No one's stopping you from creating. It's never been easier. You got to go do it. And so make sure when you make those connections, don't be like, hey, I, I really want to be, I, I want to be a comics writer. A, don't phrase it that way. Be like, hey, I'm interested in writing for, let's use an example. I'm interested in writing for Boop Studios. Cool. Love the confidence, kiddo. Um, that sounds bad, kiddo. Love the confidence, human being. Um, what have you worked on? If you're like, oh, I'm working on stuff. I'm hopefully going to publish something soon. Like, you may be able to follow up with that person, but when you shoot your shot, make sure you're ready. Like, um, Make sure you're, you've got your stuff lined up because we talked about first impressions. Someone may forget you and you come back to them later, but you don't want to be the person who didn't who didn't do the work somewhere, right? Who didn't have their webcomic or hasn't done work somewhere else. And, you know, part of this networking is as you meet other creators, maybe you talk to those creators and you're like, you know, and you find the right creator who's willing to read your scripts or willing to read your pitches, um, who's willing to who's willing to help groom you with that. But you're gonna to have to do the work too. They're not there to help you break your stories. They're not there to to do multiple edits. If you find someone willing to take time to review something, you send them. You get a shot. They'll give you your notes. They're not going to now check if you did the notes right. It's not going to happen for the most part. So like, you got to just make sure you got your you got your stuff together. And like, if you're an artist, always have new samples. If you're a writer, keep creating new content regularly. That is, it's tough. It's a really tough business, and you've got to find a way to differentiate yourself. And um, I'm telling you, if I, uh, Ross, please don't fire me, but if I got fired tomorrow and I was pitching stuff, I'd be going through the same process. I'd have to be like, I'd be going to Kickstarter. And I'd be publishing digital comics and I would be networking and writing scripts every waking minute I, I got. I do that right now on the weekends. I spend eight or 10 hours every week uh, either uh, trying to break new pitches or writing scripts to see if the pitch sustains. I've, there is one pitch I have been working on for a year and I have written the script 16 times and I'm trying to, and I'm not there. I just can't figure it out. But every so often I get my, try to get my brain back to it, try to figure it out. But like, I'm getting closer one day, maybe. And I keep, and I'm working on other stuff. And like, you know, this is, um, you've got to challenge yourself. And here's the other thing. You've got to give yourself deadlines. So the Jinder Mahal story is an example. Like, I don't have a ton of time. I had two weeks to write um, the Jinder Mahal. I had two weeks to, uh, from when I got assigned the story to deliver the Jinder Mahal story on deadline. Two weeks is a long time for 10 pages. Honestly, it's a really good amount of time. Chris was very cool to me. I got assigned it on a Thursday, and I told myself, I need to have this done by Monday because Chris just gave me a shot. And if I and I know I'm going to be working like crazy, and if I don't get this done, um, I'm going to be so close to that deadline I want to reward Chris's faith in me by delivering something. So I drove myself nuts over that weekend and I got the script on Monday. And it's just like, that's, and you have to do it, man. Like I'm going to tell you the other thing I said uh, in this presentation was um, everyone has the answer. If, if you're honest with yourself about it. And that's, again, uh, I, I don't need to go through all the fast and furious comparisons, but like, in any situation, if someone's like, hey, what do you think you should do? You're probably afraid to say the answer. But if I'm like, no, you just got to tell me. You'll blurt out what your instinct is, right? So what I've been teaching myself to do is write under like ridiculous, not ridiculous, but tight deadlines so that I teach myself to hone those instincts. You're doing, you're putting in the reps, hone your instincts. Because whenever you're stressed out, you, re you, re you revert back to instinct. 
your so train yourself for those that train your instincts to be better. And so, um, you know, for any talent there, just put yourself to deadlines. I'm not saying you have all the time in the world. I'm lucky that my wife allows me the time on the weekends to write because we don't see each other much during the week. We both work schedules. Like I leave work before she does some days. And then you know, she sometimes will leave work before me. I'll get back later or vice versa. But like we're ship, we talk, we get a chance to see each other for like two minutes in the morning. Um, you know, we wake up, say, hi, I love you. And we come home at night. We maybe, if we're lucky, talk for 10 minutes. So weekends are precious. Now, if you have kids, if you have other stuff in your life, I'm not disparaging you. I'm not saying you have to assign yourself my crazy deadline, but you've got to hold yourself to a deadline. You've got to figure out your deadline. You've got to put a time constraint on it. Um, and you've got to just get it done. The only way to do the work is to do the work. Then when you sit down to talk to people and you've shown them, hey, I have a web comic going up every monthly, right? Weekly, daily. You've shown them you know how to hit a deadline. You've shown them you know how to make a comic. And like that's really important to do. And speech. <laughs> uh, another thing I liked when you talk about the professionals and that it's something I that I thought about that I saw and I see at conventions. Um, you know, we're all like you said, we're all collectors. We're all um, we're all into the hobby. Um, and I know Andy, I'm sure you can relate to this because when we were at Heroes Con, you know, you gotta wear different hats. So sometimes you're Andy Tomlin from the Indie Spotlight series. Sometimes you're Andy from Bat Comic Shop. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're just Andy the fan. And something that I want you guys to realize when you go there is try to make sure when you're presenting yourself as, you know, whether it's a member of the media or an aspiring writer, that you're not also there trying to get 12 signatures at the same time. You're not yeah. also there with like a stack of books falling out under your arms. Try to, you know, make sure you're, you're separating those put your, when when I put my Simple Ones Comics hat on and I and I walked it, that's what I was trying to do. So I wanted to present myself, uh, and obviously even the simple stuff that Arun said. If you know anything about a comic convention, please shower, please wear deodorant, please do all of that because comic conventions get nasty, and especially down here in the South. Uh, you know, we were down here in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's hot down here, but um, yeah, I could have made it. I could have made a trillion dollars on a deodorant stand. Is all I'll tell you. Um, but you know what? You wouldn't. You wouldn't have made a dollar because nobody would have bought it from you. That's <laughs> yes, the sad, you're probably right. That's the sad probably thing right. about it. But, but you, know, you, guys, you, know, you got. You got to tell them the deodorant has a low print run. Right. <laughs> limited variants on it, and then hide a variant, man. You got to do it. <laughs> that's the, That's the absolute truth. That's the absolute truth. But that. But it is. It is the case because you know. Andy and I were on the convention floor. We're looking at books. At the same point, you know, we're trying to do, you know, interviews and things like that. So I, when I went up to these booths, I wanted to, them to see me. So now we were lucky. I had this Simple Women's Comics shirt or a CBSI shirt. Um, I, you know, I'm presenting myself the way that I want to be presented. Um, did I go up to those creators later and get some signatures, whether it's for giveaways for the channel, for myself? Sure. But I, I didn't do it in a manner and where I was coming off like like a rude say, where I'm, I'm asking you to be on a show, I'm asking you to sign books, you know, I'm asking you five questions about your book. And I didn't want, you don't want to overwhelm somebody in that way. And you want to make sure when you walk away that you left the impression that you want to leave. And um, not coming up there and coming and asking for too much and doing too much and giving that impression of who are you? Are you, are you? just to make it personal for myself. Are you, are you AKA Mr. Bolo from Simpleman's comics or are you Jack trying to get 12 books signed um, at that moment for CGC? You know, you got to make sure you separate those two. Yeah. And I think you also, when you walk up to someone, just be honest about what you want. Don't do that thing where you small talk and then you want something. People will respect and respond better. You can walk with, Hey, my name's Jack. I want to actually talk to you. Like I'm a writer. I'm looking for opportunities. Um, and it, like, if you recognize someone, um, this sounds so arrogant. If you know me, like you see me at the show and you're like, Hey, I saw you on this thing. Walk up to like, Hey, I saw you on, uh, I saw you at Simple Man's Comics. Um, you know, I'm looking to get connected with someone. I'm a writer. I'd like to talk to someone about opportunities. Just be straight up. Don't be like, Hey man. So, uh, I heard PK Subban got traded to the New Jersey Devils. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, and then be like, and then, and then, then try to sneak in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of like, I, I want to write comics. Let me tell you, we all can see it in your eyes. We all can see when you're trying to get there, 
you're not that good. And I say that as someone who's a terrible liar. So like, you're not that good. Just be friggin' honest about what you want. Like, don't, don't suck up because here's the thing, here's the thing about lies and about artifice. Eventually you'll be exposed and you got to deal with it. So like, just create less work for yourself. There's no, there's no um, BS to deal with if you don't create the BS. So just be straight up with someone and you'll find they want to help you. And again, first impressions, like Jack was saying, like separate those situations. Um, my old boss at CBR, Jonah Weiland, uh, when I used to work in Comic Resources, remember when I called him from Marvel as a publicist, we were arguing about something. And so like we were done arguing and like, and I was like, hey dude, so like, how's it going? And he's like, hey dude, you know what? Like we're talking to professionals right now. He's like, why don't you just like, why don't you just like hang up, like call me back and like, we'll talk as friends, but like, we got to keep these conversations separate. And that's an extreme example. And I called him up like, hey dude, what's up? He goes, hey. And he, this guy was a groomsman at my wedding. Okay. One of my best friends. I love him. He's family. But he's, uh, but he like taught me that, which is like separate the conversation. Like small talk can be good. Sometimes you need it, but like, don't conflate friendship or those personal relationships with the professional. Like just, you know, um, be, uh, just be straight up about what you want. And everything will be better. So you were saying don't have Cheetos on your face and stuff. <laughs> But no, you know what I gotta tell you? You know, I said don't have Cheetos in your beard. Taping them to your face shows dedication. To <laughs> what? I can't I can't grow a beard real well, so it'd have been better <laughs> hanging out your nose. <laughs> that was good. That was good, Brian. But yeah, that was a um, a wealth of information from Maroon. So much so much good stuff there. I mean, even I just picked up on a bunch of information and stuff that between Jack's experience at Heroes Con and then the information that Arun just gave out, um, it's definitely something to take note of. I want to make an offer to any of any of your simple any Simple Man's Comics viewers here. Um, look, I got to first be honest. Andy's my favorite, so I'll let Brian and Jack figure out who's number two and three. Um, you know, it makes you know I'm just messing with y'all, but it's uh, uh, we should. Um, uh, what I'm going to say is, if you see me at a Comic Con, what I want you to do is come up and be like, hey, and if you want, like, if you are going to be approaching another publisher and you're not sure how to do it, if it's Boom, I want you to know, if you come up to me and you're like, hey, we're going to sign Simple Man's Comics. I, don't, I haven't talked to publishers much before. Apologies if I screw this one up. Cool, don't worry about it. If you're like, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to go like talk to those folks at Dark Horse or Image or Marvel, like, you know, like, this is a new experience for me. Like, do you got any advice? I promise you, I will make a few minutes to talk to you. Don't get me when I'm clearly in running off somewhere else, but like hit me up on Twitter if you want. But like, if you see me at a show, I'm happy to help. Like I'll see y'all, uh, I won't be, I don't think I'll be at San Diego, but I'll see you at New York Comic Con. Just come say hi. You know, like uh, if you see me, I'm always happy to offer advice. Um, happy to sign WWE forever number ones. Um, but like ask for, uh, ask for, um, if you want advice, like, I don't know a better term than safe space, but like it's a safe space to just come to me with and like be like, hey, uh, is this the right way to approach it? Cool. Like, let's have, the, I, I want to help you because like the thing about all this is like the more good people there are in comics, the more good people there are in comics. And that's not a threat to anybody because you can never have enough good people. Right. And so and you can never have enough talented people. And if you being talented is a threat to me, that speaks to my lack of talent more than it does to you threatening my position. I mean, um, so just, you know, uh, I'm always happy to offer that advice. Like I, I can't like I can't jump in y'all with calls like I'm jumping on with my buddies here with Andy and my other two favorites. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know. Don't worry, Brian. Next time you'll be my favorite. Brian, you are one of my two favorite Brian Woods, I promise. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And Jack, mayo is my favorite condiment. So, like, I feel like I love you all differently. Wow. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, like, I, I was going to say, you know, um, just, like, if I can help, let me help. And I'll tell you, most people are the same way. Just be, like, appreciative of their time. If you know you need a half hour with someone, like try, schedule that time. Don't try to get a half time on a sales on a show floor with someone or after a panel, but like, 
you know, I've had people come up to me after panels and be like, hey, um, can we chat in like sometime after this? And there's random people I've had calls with for a half hour who I've never met who just have questions about comics. I don't mind doing that stuff. I can't do it every day. And every week is tough. But like, and I, and this is not telling you to tweet at me to have a call with me. But what I am saying is that like, let's all together find a way to like, all help out each other because that's what this, like we go back to the beginning of this, like we're all enthusiastic about like, we're all enthusiastic about Power Rangers and we're all reminding you we didn't print enough angels. Like I'm not on this, I'm not on here to like, I'm not on here just to hawk some comics. Cause if I was, um, talking about x-men for 20 minutes wouldn't have been a way to do it um and also these guys wouldn't invite me back they don't want me here just telling you buy this comic it's you know it's a rare one in 50 variant or something like that right like you can read numbers you can do the math yourself i'm here <clears throat> and these guys will tell you we connected because i i hit them up on social to thank them for like t- turning me on to some things in my collection i didn't know were worth so much it's 100 percent true and like, and then this interview yeah. stuff just came up after that. Um, and like, they know I'm on call anytime they need me, I'm around now. And they know the vice versa. Is tr- I also know like these guys are like, hey, if you ever got stuff, you know, that's legit, let us know. And like, you know, we all, we all, um, we are all here to help each other. But like, that's how this was formed. This was formed just simply out of me thanking you. Right. And then this is like, I am now, I am now the champ champ of the show two times um, on this show. And like, they're, uh, you know, like, just remember, like, you should, everyone's here to help. Don't take advantage of it. Be, Be judicious, find ways to connect and like play the long game, play the long game. And if I had hit these guys up being like, Hey, I want to promo boom books on the show. What time do you got? I would not, we wouldn't have the same conversation. I probably wouldn't have been on the show yet. And if ever, cause they'd be like, we don't need some guy who's just trying to promote himself and put himself over. You know, that ain't, that ain't good for anybody. That's not good content. That's not good. That's not what the show is about. Um, it's, uh, and so like, I think you know your audience, right? Like you don't approach these folks, this, these group, great folks here that way. Um, and you don't approach folks you meet at comic convention that way, approach them with respect, make sure you know your big question. You probably get five minutes with people, know the thing you want to get to ask the question. And if you're nervous, that's okay. No one's going to dock you points for that, but don't like, don't overcompensate by like coming with all the swagger and be like, Hey, you know, I've got the best power in your story. It's going to sell like 500,000 copies. I just need to find you guys a way to give you, I need you guys to give me a chance. It's not happening. Like it's just not happening. All right. And if you're if you're an interviewer, the first piece of advice I gave Andy when when he said, you know, I, I haven't been to a big convention. I've been to a convention. What do I need to know? First thing I told him was be ready. And I learned that one kind of early on because, you know, when you're when you're at a convention as a, as a creator, you got a lot going on. You're trying to whether it's sell books or sell artwork. You're trying to meet your fans. You're trying. You're going to be signing books. You're also going to probably be paneling and then they're trying to network as well. And the time ends up getting taken up. So like Heroes Con was a three day show, but a lot of the creators were action packed. So when you go there and you say, Hey, you know, at some point this weekend, I would love five minutes to talk to you for this YouTube channel or that YouTube channel, be ready. Cause they may look at you and go, I'm, I'm ready to go right now. And if you're not ready to go at that moment, then you may not get that opportunity. And I talked about that in my very first interview with Donnie Cates. Um, he was the guy he, I knew I wanted to talk to because Redneck had just come out and um, Baby Teeth had just come out and I could see where he was going. And um, I wanted to get grab him. I went right up to him at the Aftershock booth as soon as the show started, first thing Friday. He knew what his schedule was going to look like. And that's what he said to me. He said, let's go do it right now. And if I wasn't prepared in advance to be able to go in and ask questions and have questions ready, I wouldn't have gotten that interview. And I learned from that moment on, just be ready. So preparation going into these shows, every, every show has a website that lists the guests, go through that guest list, do your research, make some notes, be ready so that when you do that interview, you, you have some pre-prepared questions because like Arun said, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to make some mistakes. I certainly have done plenty of that, 
But, um, you know, make sure that you have that knowledge ready so that if somebody says to you, I've got five minutes and it's right now, you're ready to go. Because again, you're on, you need to do what's best for them. You're on their time. You're the one asking them for value at that point. Where you provide your value is later once you put that content out and you can kind of get people on board with whatever they're trying to do. Yeah. And I think learn the, learn the art of it. And as someone who, look, I think we all can say I'm loquacious. Uh, I think we, uh, it is a hallmark for better or for worse. But if you were a professional, you are a professional interviewer because you were interviewing, period. There's no aspiring. But if you were talking to like TV or film talent, five minutes is an eternity to have them for. When you're going down those lines, you know, when you see those red carpet interviews, five minutes is an eternity. So comic creators tend to give you a bit more because comic creators are the best. Um, but remember, you got to be efficient and read the room. Like figure out like, uh, I got to remember, I got to tell you guys the dumbest question I ever asked in an interview, okay? I'm going to tell you how I didn't read the room. Um, Jim McCann, who is a buddy of mine, again, grooms at my wedding. He used to run PR at Marvel before I got there. And um, he was hosting a call with Daniel Way about Wolverine Origins when that book launched, so way back, right? And he, um, and they were asking questions. So I got on that call, it was one of those press calls. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna flex on this call and show him like, I'm gonna come with the smart question, like screw the spoilers, guys. So here's my question and it's, uh, I go, hey, if you look at how Wolverine's been written and drawn in every decade he's been around, he has always been a mirror for modern ideas of masculinity. So what do you think your version of Wolverine says about modern ideas of masculinity? You can laugh because Daniel Way laughed and everybody in the phone burst out laughing. I heard my own words. I'm like, I believe in the question, by the way. I actually do think Wolverine has always been like, what is, what is manly? And like it's filtered through there. And I think it grows. However, that call was not the place to ask that question. I didn't prep Daniel for that kind of question coming. I should have read the room and said, um, they are, and I mean this in a nice way, softball questions from my peers. That is what he is prepped for. A question about defining masculinity is not going to get the answer it needs. So like, whether it's a good question or not, and you know what, Andy, screw you. I saw you laugh. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan oh, my favorite. He's sending me a hat. He's my like, my reaction was that's a, Andy, you were dead to me. My reaction was that's a that's a great question. I kind of was interested to see what he was going to say, but I totally get what you're saying that in that environment where he's there to promote a book, that question <laughs> doesn't really promote the book. How is that dead guy still laughing at us, Jack? <laughs> I have no idea. Because now I, my head's spinning. I'm like, man, you're kind of right about Wolf. I never thought about that. Like that, that well, was it's, a deep question. Yeah, well, these are these are kind of like the dumb questions in my head because I'm like a dumb guy like this. But it's uh, it's like that's the thing though. Like you, you have to know your audience, know the situation, and you got to know how to pivot. You got to not be offended, but like, don't lead in with like if you're talking to Al Ewing about um, you know, Immortal Hulk, right? That's definitely a book y'all talk about a lot <laughs> on on CBSI. Um, Immortal Hulk number two. Well, I wish I bought the darn issue um, at cover price, but it's uh, like, don't start talking to Al Ewing about the first question about philosophy, about man and monster and like, you know, human nature. Like, obviously that's there in the metaphor, but like maybe work up to it and see if you get there. And also like, know that if you ask that question, he gives you an answer. You're going to use up a lot of your time. So make sure that's the question. You don't feel like you've been asked a million times. You're going to get a good answer for um you really you gotta like um and don't by the way don't do that thing where people are like i hear some people saying when it's really your opinion like don't do that like if if there are people saying something like be like hey we have seen some chatter online here's this here's these here's these perspectives but like don't do the thing like some people are saying this is this um i've That's done that for a friend yeah yeah <laughs> you know and my 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 late friend andy <laughs> because if you do i'll miss you but also i'll feel like i jinxed you now death note style. thanks man thanks yeah. um make it to san diego that's all i'm asking man yeah no um, if i go y'all know what happened yeah I, I cursed him um i'm like drake i just cursed him um but like you know don't be like my don't ask a question disguised as like a, an opinion disguised as a question like just you know get to know people and you can get to the place to have honest discussion. Um, 
but you also need to be ready for answers. You're not, you, you got to really think about what questions you're asking. Um, and then uh, dumb last little thing. Uh, this is, this is learn your pronouns. They, them, he, she, learn, learn your pronouns. Um, it may not matter to you. And I don't actually care what your opinion is on identity. What I what it matters what matters to people is those pronouns matter. Uh, it matters how people care about what their name what about how you uh, how you say their name. So like uh, you know Andy may not like being called Andrew. I should put some attention into how he's credited and, and not call him like think I'm being really smart. Like if you meet someone named Chuck, don't be like well Charles. You know like respect them, know how to pronounce their name. Um, and if you don't know, like if you meet me and you're like, I don't know quite know how to say your name. I'm so sorry, how do you say it? I'll be like, it's Arun. It's like Maroon without the M. You know, it's, you know, just like go with it. Uh, and like, no one's gonna hold it against you, but just learn the basics out of respect, the basics we all would want, right? And as you get to know people, and remember this first interview doesn't have to be your last. If you do it right, you can talk with them again. And so that's, that's, that's what you got to do. Um, look, as someone who Joe Quesada is a friend of mine, the first time I interviewed him for IGN back in 2000, I did such a bad job. He called me out on it. And he like kind of remembered it when I started working for Marvel. I was like, yeah, dude, look, I screwed that up big time. I was dumb. Thanks for like not holding it against me. It's like, ah, oh, man, you were young. You're figuring it out. But he had to put me in my place. Like I didn't have to use a recorder. I thought I could take the notes and I sent him the transcript. He goes, dude, I asked you to use a recorder for a reason. I'm basically going to have to rewrite this whole interview. Now you've made me spend double the time on this. He still did it because Joe's a class act, but don't think you're smarter than the good advice. Record your interviews. Um, and also if you're having a conversation with someone about how to break in, it's not unfair to be like, hey, can I just record this real quick? Whether it's your iPhone or like one of those recorders from like a Radio Shack. Um, just like, it may be good, especially if you're nervous to have the notes like that. Don't be afraid of like having that, you know, um, you know, kind of like trail for it. So um, yeah, like look, basic respect. Uh, and, and again, um, I think if you want advice, like Brian, Andy, Jack are like two out of the three people here are really awesome. Um, you'll decide who the bad one is. Uh, but it's a um and so like just make sure like hit up people like this for advice like you know at, like if you don't ask people questions they'll never ask people like me questions right so like much like i was joking that and but it was serious that these guys mentioned what variant covers they want so i passed it on to editorial ask these guys questions so when they get into conversation with these pros you can get different answers like my gospel is different than you know someone else's gospel um and everyone has a different path but like you just um be a decent person, and I promise you, be an honest person. It will all work out at the end. Uh, one of the coolest compliments that we got about the channel, and I reached out to Brian and uh, told him, I don't want to, I don't want to name the name of the person who said it. I don't know if they would want that, but um, you know, I was doing a, a uh, covering a panel at Heroes Con, and uh, you know, a creator and another podcaster said, you know, I've seen your channel, I've seen your show, and you know, we're three Southern white guys. And uh, the person made the, the point, this is a person of color, making the point of saying, you know, you guys, I've seen your show, you guys have had people of color, you've had uh, homosexuals, and, you know, and we've been, you guys are really respectful of those things. To be honest with you, we never even put any thought into that. It was just, like Arun said, just try, you got to be a good person. You can have whatever opinions you want to have. Like Arun said, I don't care. Um, give it to yourself. But face of comics is changing things. It's, it is an inclusive place. And if you're not the type of person who is able to be um, open and respectful of people from all walks of life, you're going to struggle. Uh, it's just, it's not going to be there. And getting that compliment when that wasn't, it was something, of course we want, but it wasn't something I had ever really thought of and said, I it honestly didn't even dawn on me till the person said it that we are three southern white guys. Um, it just wasn't anything I had thought of, but um, it was a good compliment. It made me feel like that we were making a mark and that we were doing we were leaving an impression. Um, so, as you said, yeah. pronouns are very big. Just 
here's the thing, like like you said, whether whatever your views are on these issues, we can all agree we should be respectful to each other, right? So part of that respect is knowing how to say someone's name or asking, is knowing their preferred pronouns, doing the work. And if you make a mistake, don't get defensive, apologize, move on. Most people don't mind, but like, that's the thing, like, this is not about SJWs or whatever. Like, this is not about politics. This is about professionalism. This is agnostic of political beliefs, religious beliefs. Just like learn the basics to have the conversation. Like, you know, it's that's all you need to do. This is is this is uh, that will get you far in life in general. Um, but anyway, that's enough. For, that's enough uh, sermons from the mountaintop about uh, about comic about comic stuff uh, uh, about networking. Like, look, we've said it. Y- y'all get it. You're smart. You watch Simple Man's comics. You you go to CBSI. You're in the know. You know how this goes. Um, so you know, just uh, uh, these gentlemen give you good advice. Follow follow what they say. They're, they're they're two out of three are smart. One of them's really smart. Decide which one's which. Yeah. As, you know, <laughs> so as you guys know on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, we, we have a tendency, especially Brian and I, we have a tendency to butcher people's last names. But when I'm at a convention, I absolutely make sure I know how to pronounce that name. That's where I learned Sinkevich versus yeah. Sinkowitz and everything else. You have to know how to pronounce that name. It makes a difference. Or or if you can't say his name, just at, like say hi, be like, hey, I apologize. I'm I'm not quite sure how to say your last name. I don't want to butcher it. Can you just help me? 